They've all come here to battle with the best, to be the best in the 2019 Nike Cross National. You made it on the national stage. At first, running was just jogging on the weekend. Now, it's a way of life. It's more than running, it's passion. You've put yourself in the best sport in the world. Whatever happens today, you're giving it your all. One foot in front of the other. Everyone here wants it just as bad as you. Looking back, how are you going to remember today? The one day you'll never forget for the rest of your life. Nike Cross Nationals 2019. The top two high school cross country teams in America this year are both from Southern California. The perennial power, six time defending Division I champion, Great Oak, and the new sensation, back to back Division II state champion, Newberry Park. The most important race of the year, 22 teams, 14 of them state champions, 203 runners. 33 of them won individual state titles. The competition assembled is like Murderer's Row. 43 degrees, stubborn winds, freezing rain, frustrating mud, 5,000 meters, two Golden State legends, one final test. It's, it's difficult. I mean, there is no other championship where you got to beat the other 21 best teams in the country all at the same time. If you have a good day, but somebody else just has an amazing day at the right time, you can lose, even if you're the best team on paper. In our world of cross country, everyone will be watching the National Showdown. We enjoy the spotlight. I think you can enjoy it or it can hurt you. I think it's keeping these kids motivated. And like I said, 420 is not fast. We, we can get these kids to, to get where they need to be. I'm Rich Gonzalez. I've joined forces with HD Runners to take a deeper look at this incredible season and the biggest national rivalry of all time. Nationals, the final monumental battle in this best two out of three. Who will be crowned as national champion? The dynasty, Great Oak, or the new showstopper, Newbury Park? The grand finale at Nike Cross Nationals. is not fast for a high school mile. It's just not fast. Nico Young, he's a crazy runner. He's a beast. Seeing them reach these goals and having success they never knew they could have. You don't want to disappoint the history of Great Oak. There comes an automatic pressure. Give me four years and I promise you a state title. We want world domination and we want to win every level at a meet. We want to be good at everything. The 2019 cross country postseason marks the arrival of an absolutely blockbuster crop. Team wise, there are four powerhouse squads. California leads the way, showcasing Newberry Park, the fastest squad in Woodward Park history. Also in the mix is Great Oak, which has already beaten Newberry Park and thinks it can do it again. Add in two-time defending national champion Loudoun Valley of Virginia plus fast-rising national power Corner Canyon of Utah. The team battle is stacked. There were nerves. No, there was a lot of pressure. We understood the circumstance of how many good teams there were. Four big teams just all coming together. You know, you're, you have Corner Canyon, you have Newberry, you have so much talent there. If we are going to go on top, we really need to buckle down and just focus on this race. Uh, that, you know, it's gonna be a tough fight for who's gonna be on top. For Great Oak, most of its varsity runners are now seniors who as eighth graders saw Great Oak win the national title in 2015. My passion kind of began uh, by covering it from people who had gone from Vail Ranch, my middle school, to Great Oak and telling me about it. It was really interesting. 
a constant reminder of greatness, sits in Doug's classroom, a replica of the 2015 National Championship Trophy. In 2015, they shipped us the trophy and we were excited and we, we didn't realize it was a perpetual trophy. So I was fortunate that I didn't throw the case away because no one told me you're gonna be sending this back. So uh, Pat Werhane called and said, hey, we're gonna need the, the trophy back a year later. And I said, what do you mean? It's, we wanna keep the trophy. He said, don't worry about it, we'll make you one. So they, they made us a wooden NXN trophy um, that we get to keep in our classroom. So, you know, the kids come in and they touch it and they're excited and we'll bring it down. And, you know, just, I think it shows that we can do the impossible. Did you try to send back the wooden one maybe? <laughs> no, no, but you know, Nike's been amazing and, and you know, they, they take care of their champions really well. After the state meet, Newberry Park is focusing on the big race ahead. The most important wildcard factor, their number three man, sophomore Colin Salman. He has to break up Great Oaks scoring pack if Newberry Park is to win the national title. Like I never thought that I was like going to be like this national like ranked guy. I, just thought, oh, I was like just like a good runner. It's not normal to be the best in the country. It's not normal to be the best in the state. There is going to be a sacrifice. And then I come to Newberry Park and then the atmosphere just completely changed. I, I was like, you know what, I can be a national runner. W how bad do you guys want it? I've had kids tell me they're willing to give 100% this season. And I've looked them straight in the eye and said, you don't know what 100% is. Well, it's definitely like a huge like change. Sean has obviously helped me with that. It's just, he's done a great job. Nike Cross Nationals, held at Glendevere Golf Course in Portland, Oregon since 2014. A golf course filled with wet, thick grass and mud that can drain your leg muscles empty. These conditions are second nature to runners from the Pacific Northwest and the East Coast. For these Southern California teams, they'll have to adapt to the rainy Oregon weather. You know, we were struggling at NXN with soft surface work. You know, we would get up there and the kids were like, I don't know how to run in this. So we're trying to make sure that the kids can handle the soft surfaces. They're not gonna panic when they get through the first mile and their legs feel heavier than they normally do. The Wolfpack boys have been to NXN every year since winning the title in 2015. Our ultimate goal is to make sure that we, we've we shored up any weaknesses in our top seven, because you know, someone's gonna have a bad race. So if we've got seven good kids, then we know we're gonna have a pretty good performance no matter what. Doug utilizes visualization to get the Wolfpack mentally set as well. Really visualizing we spent a lot of time visualizing and kind of just programming the kids with this is what we're gonna do this is this is how you feel this is your emotion to it so when they get in there they're not thinking they're just responding to what they expect to see Sean's training for Annex N is relentless. He demands the most from his runners. You know, it's progressive. We do all of our highest mileage September, October. You know, Annex N, if we had a team that was 65 miles a week, they'd probably run 55 the week of Annex N. You know, we just cut a few of the morning runs out and cut a little bit. I don't believe in going down to 30 miles a week like I've seen some programs. You know, we're running, you know, seven, eight miles two days before we race at NXN and some teams are running 15 minutes. I was like, that's insane to me. I just wouldn't do that. Individually, the talent pool assembled here is unprecedented. Colorado's Cole Sprout, a two-time All-American and the top returning nationally from 2018. Newberry Park's Nico Young, the number two returning nationally, but much improved and unbeaten in 2019. Illinois' Josh Methner, the newly minted course record holder at historic Detweiler Park. Sacramento Jesuits' Matt Strangio, already a two-time cross-country All-American under legendary coach Walt Lang. Ohio's Caleb Brown, unbeaten in 2019 and a pre-race favorite in the minds of many. Texas state champion Ryan Shoppy, fresh off a mind-boggling 3,200-meter negative split performance on the track. Oregon's Evan Holland, the home state favorite and also unbeaten this year. Idaho's Nathan Green, the top non-senior in the land. Only Arizona's Leo Dashbaugh, sidelined by late season injury, is missing. In terms of strength and depth, this is the best field in American high school cross-country history. For Sean and Nico, it'll be their last cross-country race together as coach and athlete. This is their coup de gras.
People get mad I say this. I said, no one can beat him at NXN. Well, his goal was to be NXN champion. So when we talked about it, it, to us, it was simple. It was like, it's all go at NXN. So this is sport, this is NCA. You're gonna have to perform when on that day when people expect you to, and like, this is it. Like, let's put everything in on this. Both teams arrive at Nike World Headquarters two days before the race to a red carpet treatment unlike any other. Trail runs wind through Nike campus. An all-weather track is buried inside a forest. Endless nutrition for the athletes. Entertainment centers, photo booths, Nike swag, shakeout runs, and dinners alongside world-class athletes. Oh yes, in the high school cross-country world, these runners hold their own golden ticket to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Cross-country is one of those sports. It's not a glory sport. It's not the money sport, right? It's not the football, the baseball, the basketball. But it's a sport that has its own set of excitement. One special event taking place at Nike campus is the annual Gear Up. As teams are serenaded to music and a special introduction, their race day kits are unveiled. Since each team competes as a club, the name across the jersey is the city they represent. Oh, 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 dude, look at this. Look at this. Spikes. Holy oh, crap. NXN is glamorous. You know, the headquarters is beautiful, but we were there before. You know, we experienced it. It's very cool, we're appreciative of what they do, but we have a goal in mind, right? So our whole team is zoned into that aspect of the game. It was a business trip. It was a business trip, <laughs> as Sol said. Leading into NXN weekend, the local weather forecast is for sunshine, a blessing for California teams. But lo and behold, come race day, Mother Nature and the cross country gods have their own ideas. If the, if the conditions are terrible, because I didn't know, we didn't know, I said, N none of these teams run in conditions like this, they're all fooling you. And I didn't even know if that was true. I said, they all pretend they run better in the mud. I said, that's BS, let's just go out there and just don't believe the hype that like a muddy course is bad for California. The NXN is a panic inducing event. And if you have no experience on that course, you know, you see kids get shot out the back left and right because the course is very difficult. Sometimes when it's really rainy like that, it's just like in football, you know, a better team can lose because the ball bounces a little bit funky in the mud. So, you know, we knew that, that we didn't have anything in the bag and we were gonna have to run really, really well to win. Going into NXN, you know, we had this certain uh, air of confidence. You know, we knew that we wanted to uh, win no matter what. Our key was to support each other, to have confidence in each other that if one of us falls back, uh, any one of us could come back and take the place of the person who had some kind of fallback. Five of us were seniors, so this was our last race of the our whole high school career. So we were just gonna give it all we got. Um, we were real confident, we were ready for it. Probably the most pressure I've ever felt running, like, or racing. And like that week, we were just focused on it. We knew what we had to do before the race, and we just tried to do everything that we could. At NXN, I think I told you in the elevator before the race, I wanted to get top five to top 10. And you kind of looked at me and went, whew. <laughs> and I think at that point, I didn't fully grasp how tough the competition is individually. I felt really good coming into NXN, definitely. Um, I think I was prepared really well because I knew that I didn't go all out at the state meet. I knew this was my time to shine, so I was really ready. The final pre-race moments. Nerves are building, tension fills the air. But it's in these high pressure situations that history is made and legends are born. Something I told the guys before NXN is something I do a lot during races is just take two or three seconds to smile and remember why you're here. If you love doing the easy runs, you're okay with the workouts and you're still having fun, you do this sport because you love it and you love showing up every day. So you need to show that in the culmination of all your training. Newberry Park's shining front runner, Nico, 
finally has been given the green light to go all out. I pulled, I ran on, the, I was on the course. I went on the course, we all got in the huddle, and I told him, this is something I say all the time, I said, listen, it's gonna hurt like hell out there, and you're gonna put your head down, and you're gonna say, I can, I can, I can, and you keep having to say that. And then I walked away and I said, let's go get a national title. For Great Oak, one of its leading runners is sidelined by injury. Will this be a deciding factor? I honestly just give them all a hug and tell them, you know, we love you, we're proud of you, you know, go out there and do what you can do. As we'll walk our way down all the boxes here, still some smiles, a lot of nerves, some confidence built into some of these squads as well. They've all come here to Glendevere Golf Course in Portland, Oregon to battle with the best, to be the best in the 2019 Nike Cross National. Right from the start, both teams unleash their signature style. Newbury Park surges to the front while Great Oak tucks in among the chase pack. We knew from the start that it was gonna be a front runner race for Newbury and uh, all five uh, in-depth running group for Great Oak. And so it all came to our, not our front scores, but our group and our culture. Taking his cue from Nico's lead, Newbury Park number three man Colin goes out hard as well. This is a bold move in such a talented field, but the team's fate rests on his performance. I, well, we wanted him out. I mean, I think Collins took the lead right here. That was a little <laughs> unexpected. It was only for about five, 10 seconds. Um, but I wanted them all out. I, we trained to go out. I was like, you gotta get out that first 800. You see a couple of kids went down there. I was like, you gotta get out that first 800 and then you gotta settle in because you just don't want, I didn't want my guys in 100th place off the bat. Great Oaks team arrives phenomenally well balanced. Doug's race plan is carefully calculated. We know where they're supposed to be at the mile, where they're supposed to move to in the second mile and then how they're supposed to close. And we actually were in a pretty good spot, uh, you know, through the first mile. As the mass of bodies charges through the course, the pressure is on Newbury Park's number three man, Colin Salmon. Keep in mind, he's only a sophomore. There were so many seniors in that race. I didn't know that there were like that many. I knew I definitely was not messing up during NXN because I was sticking with Great Oaks number one guy. So I was like, okay, as long as I'm like with him, I think I'm good, um, but it's like kind of crazy. In this high intensity race, Every pass is critical. It could be the difference between the national championship and a missed opportunity. Chris Verdugo and, and Cole Swearish Jaeger, who were our two guys that came in the top 10 at Clovis, had fallen out the back. So I knew we were still gonna be okay, you know, somewhere in the top six or seven, but I didn't think we were competing for the, the team title at that point. Um, you know, so it was a little bit frustrating. When we got to Portland that first night, he called and asked if I had any emergency or vitamin C or something. That's unlike him. I knew something was up. Going into that race, the first lap that we saw him, his dad and I knew something was off. We can tell by his posture immediately. It's going to be good or it's going to be bad. And we knew it was going bad very quickly. I saw Colin come and he looked good, but I missed my four, five, six, and seven. I, I didn't even, see, I saw my seven. I'm like, well, they, I don't think all three of them dropped out. Like, I just couldn't find them in the mix of people. So, honestly, I saw the first mile split and I knew we were in the lead by then. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know until, until I saw the finish and then I was a little worried, but. I, I definitely felt really tired when I got towards probably like 3K when we came through the start line again because um, I knew that was the point where um, when we ran the course the day before my coach said that's the point where I'm going to need to push. Um, so I threw in a surge right there even though I was really tired because I knew that that's, that's the point where um, they'd probably gain on me if, if they did. So. Nico is digging deep up front. This is his first and last all out performance of the year. From the outside looking in, people thought he went out too fast. I was out on the course, I heard what people were saying, and they're mm -hmm. like, he looks terrible, he's gonna come in, he ain't coming back, I knew. Yeah. The Glendevere course is a championship test all to its own. The Oregon rainfall, mixing with the thick, wet grass, leads to sloshing mud that challenges each runner's physical and mental stamina. Add in top level runners all around, and you begin to realize this is how the national championship gets decided. 
where we saw Grover there fall, but now he's back up and back into third. I think we saw Easton Allred from Draper, whose team is in the top three, fall along that corner. Clearly that corner is pretty slick, and I think it's more a matter of the topsoil there really being slick. Nico continues to slice through the course, shocking his doubters. This is his race right from the get-go. By watching Nico, I mean, he, he looks as though he's in the final stages of the race, but he just continues to grind out the kilometers here and trying to put more and more space on himself and the rest of this star-studded field. In a race that brought together the deepest field of individuals in the country in 2019, Nico Young will reign supreme as Nike Cross Nationals champion. Nico wins the national title and breaks the championship course record. He destroys an all-time field, and that speaks volumes. Yeah, that was it was a, a pretty awesome day for him and his family too, and everything. And then I could see Nico looking for his teammates. <laughs> well, Newbury Park number two man Jace puts the finishing touches on his own amazing race. In a talent stacked field, he finishes an impressive 18th place, achieving his goal of becoming an All-American. It was another one of those affirmations that I can do it and I'm able to do a lot more with this sport just by relaxing and showing my love for it. Now the team title picture begins to come into focus. True to their mascot, the Wolfpack attacks the finish line. But there's unwanted company, Newbury Park's Colin Salmon. He's there to break up their scoring. I knew we were all right there together, but I also knew that Colin was with them, and that was my fear because I knew his kick was going to come into play, and I was worried if he outkicked all of our guys. At the finish, Sean is majorly concerned. Yeah, that was, I mean, Nick came by with Daniel. They came in together, and that was scary because I think they were like 90th, and I, at this point, I said they didn't make the podium. No way. I didn't, I didn't think we, I, I just didn't know. I, th I thought they were back too far. Meanwhile, two of Great Oaks' top runners have struggled. I usually tell them where I think they finished. I think I, think I said sixth or seventh. So they were not real pleased. They said, we'll wait and see if you guys made the podium. But you know, we, knowing that our two of our top guys had not run well, we figured if we got lucky, maybe we got on the podium. So hard to tell in this race, it really is. All right, we're here to uh, recognize our top three individual finishers. And uh, Galen will give us the uh, benefit of the trophies here, which I believe are right behind him. Let's first congratulate in third place, Caleb Brown. That was a, a bold move at the front. Looked like you were running the final 50 meters the entire 5K. Just Was that the plan all along? Uh, the plan was just to feel the race out and kind of go from there. I didn't really expect to take the lead, but it kind of just, I just kind of got a good start, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, when yeah. Nico won, someone took him to go change because he was like the winner and we were all wait we were freezing, we were waiting for him and then they couldn't get a hold of the Nike girl that took Nico. Okay. I'm like, where is he? And I was sitting there, we're sitting there talking to all the, you know, marketing people and I was like, we were, where the heck is this guy? We are, uh, we are now getting to that moment here. We're gonna, we were waiting for a couple of uh, missing athletes from a couple of the squads. So give us just one second here and then we'll bring the top three teams to the stage. We were trying to find Nico at the same thing, mm -hmm. and then a couple of my guys' parents were there. I, I kind of walked away, and I was like, I, I, was, I think I was trying to find stuff on my phone. I couldn't, and I remember just, there was no one around. I just took this water bottle, and I chucked it, and like exploded against the fence. I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to go face these kids now. I didn't think we podium. I think they saw the look on my face, and my number five guy, he, he just was shaking his head, had his head down. I'm like, Daniel, you ran your heart out. I'm like, 
don't worry about it, it's good. And then one of the guys at Nike came around and said, stay here to get ready to go on. I said, we made the podium? And he's like, yeah. All right, we're gonna bring him up in alphabetical order. Half the battle for me is to remember my ABCs now. Let's bring up Draper. Then we're gonna bring up Newberry Park. And our last squad, Temecula. Thirty-five points separating first through fourth place. Fourteen points separating these three squads for the NXN title. So we'll first present our third place trophy with 142 points, Draper. When we were sitting there and, we, and I heard Draper, and I said, okay, now it's coming down to the two California teams. And I heard, I don't know who it was, someone's like, that's right, California could run in the mud. I'm like, yeah, who said that? I don't know, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I honestly, when right before they announced the second place team, I was thinking, how do we get off this stage if they win because they're to our left and they put us in the middle because it's alphabetical order? I was like, this is gonna be hard. And they were on the stage and I just remember it was cold, heavy rain, the kids were all, there was three teams up on the stage, we weren't sure which one won yet, and we're waiting for that announcement. And everybody's waiting, you're kinda holding your breath, and you got a lump in your throat. Just four points separating first and second. Our 2019 NXN runners up with 132 points. Temecula. feeling on that stage was, uh, I guess, like, undescribable. I mean, I think mainly, I mean, I was super excited. I, I was really watching my teammates, like, go crazy. I mean, I remember watching, like, people who don't really show too much emotion go absolutely insane over that when we're, like, freezing in the cold. It was just kind of disbelief. I mean, like, I have chills right now just thinking about it. I just knew that I wasn't cold anymore. <laughs> I had to put my arms up. I think the NXN crew, like, they had captured the moment and I was just so happy. Like, I didn't even realize that it was cold outside anymore. I didn't feel the rain. I was just so happy that we won and accomplished our goal. And congratulations to our 2019 NXN champions, Newberry Park. I feel like there's nothing that could beat that that I've done. I think that was, that probably bring me, I probably was the happiest then. Um, really, really proud of me and my team. So I think that definitely was the, biggest accomplishment. Well, Coach, we heard from uh, Nico, and uh, now let's hear from you on behalf of these very cold boys. This was quite a day for you guys. It was an absolutely great day. You know, I got to say, um, hats off to Temecula, you know, uh, Great Oak. Those, those guys, they, they push us all season, and it honestly could have gone either way. It, it was just a little bit of luck today, and, and our season started in June. These guys made a sacrifice. I can't, I can't even say what these guys sacrificed to get this today. People say I never have a loss for words, but I, I'm, I have a loss for words right now. It's unbelievable. All right, well, you guys go get this team warm. Congratulations to our 2019 NXN team champions, Newbury Park. For the Great Oak Seniors, it was a crushing experience to finish as the national runner-up yet again. There were mistakes made and uh, you know just it happens you know and that's what running is right so for us to be able to still in that, be in that bar margin having two All-Americans on Newberry I think it was very special. No other team in the country could have one key runner out, two others not factor in the team scoring and yet still contend for the national title. I was I was proud of of uh, those guys stepping up like that and you know I didn't realize how close they were to our front guy. Like it, it, they really came together at the end. So 
we could give it our best shot. We couldn't do anything more. We were all eating right. We worked out well. We were all rested. We were all ready for that race. I don't think we could have done anything more. Once it's all said and done, the final margin, just four precious points. Kind of was the joke was four points. You know, the girls lost by four points at state. Boys lost four points at nationals. That, that hurts. Nothing's guaranteed. You go out there, you give it your best, you enjoy the process, you learn from it. It could have gone either way. I mean, I don't, think that's a, I don't think that's a secret. You know, winning by four points, it could have been anyone's race that day. I think it was like kind of meant to be for our guys for that season, but I don't know, it's hard to say exactly, but. Entering the summer, Nico Young was the top runner in the country. By Woodbridge, Jace Ashbrenner had developed into the fastest number two scorer in the country. And now, at NXN, the unsung hero was Newberry Park's Colin Salmon, who had developed into the fastest number three scorer in the country. That made a crucial difference. He, he, he won it for him, honestly. The, the big kick, that last 100 meters out of Colin, I think was the, the, the sealing the deal. Achieving their biggest goal is the ultimate highlight for these student athletes. I think the most rewarding portion of this for us is seeing him really reap the rewards of putting in hard work. Sean expects a lot from these kids, and I am just impressed how much they step up to actually meet those expectations. When falling just short, these high achievers can't help but hold themselves accountable. He didn't talk much at first. He's still not over that race, unfortunately. I, I think it's gonna take him a while. It was his senior year. To hear that they got second again, Chris, it's gonna take a long time for him to get over that race. Cross country, a unique sport providing these runners with a sense of accomplishment, extreme fitness, life skills, friendships, and special memories they'll always cherish. Work ethic, definitely work ethic. It doesn't matter if it's an algebra test or a track meet. You know, you're gonna get what you pay for. If you wanna do well on the algebra test, you're gonna come home and you're gonna study. If you wanna do well on cross country or track, you're gonna run. And don't expect anything else to come free. My pride isn't so much how many trophies we have, you know all the state championships. More like, where are the kids now? How, how, how did this experience with Great Oak and our program make them a better person? Self-reliance and perseverance to know that if you just keep going and keep following the training regimen, then they will meet their goals. He gained confidence, that bottom line. It, he's been able to finally build his confidence. Leadership is a big thing. I mean, he, he's had an opportunity along with Nico this year to really lead the team. But seeing him run, he's, face when he run, he'd run happy. Yes, he was miserable when they lost by four points in the national championship. I agree, I'm, we're still thinking about it. It was like two seconds, you're right there, right? But be, watching him be happy, that was, that's everything, every parent wants that. You want your kids to be happy, no matter what. So he was happy. Stressful, but happy. <laughs> the future is bright for these student athletes moving on to college. For Chris, after a successful prep career, he'll be attending the prestigious United States Military Academy at West Point. Jace was a valedictorian and will continue his education running with the Buffaloes at the University of Colorado at Boulder. I'm going there to study mechanical engineering and then hopefully do a master's in material science. And the dream job would be to help in product design at Nike, which would be really awesome. <laughs> For Gabe, he'll be attending UC Berkeley along with Wolfpack teammates Ariana Griffiths, Cole Sawiers Jaeger, and Eric Reza. I'd say off the course, uh, being able to contribute to the world as much as I can. You know, uh, my goal is to leave with less than you know what they put in for me. I want to I want to be, be something in law. Uh, you know, I want to do something interesting. But uh, as for athletics, I want to I want to reach the maximum I could be for. Uh, you know, college running. I want to be the best I could be and, and hopefully make a great team at UC Berkeley. And I, I know there's great coaches and there's great runners for those components. Nico graduates as valedictorian and will be running for the prestigious program at Northern Arizona University. Looking ahead, I think uh, I have some high goals. I know I want to run really well and I'm 
I think I have put myself in the best environment to do so in college. So um, I'm really, really excited for that. And um, hopefully that brings me uh, to running after college. That's, that's my goal. The gargantuan rivalry between Great Oak and Newberry Park was intense on the course. But off the course, these teams showed respect, sportsmanship, and performances unlike any other. This just was such a special group of kids that got along so well, and you've got to work to maintain that. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not just show up and win, it's do it as a, as a collective group. One of the things that we really preach is being elite. If you're gonna be elite, it's not just being fast. Making sure that, hey, if you get beat, Someone put a lot of work in to take you down. You go over, shake their hand, and let them know, hey, congratulations, you beat us today. All of his guys, every one of them came over and congratulated us. And I'm not just saying on the stage, but even afterwards, they have that dinner afterwards, every one of them. It's good to have someone challenge you um, without hating them in the process. You know, I think that I think that was good for the sport to say, hey, we can, have, we can be rivals, and yet we could still be friends, so. I gotta say, I'm a Wolfpack for life, and I, I, the pride is, is gonna be there forever. Even if my kids aren't interested in hearing about 2020 and how we performed when it's 2040, say, or 2050, it, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I was able to participate on a team with such great coaches and such great teammates and friends. Uh, that, that's gonna stick with me for life. The 2019 season was legendary. We saw the iconic rise of Nico Young, the greatest high school runner in California history. Early in 2020, Nico was named Gatorade Cross Country Athlete of the Year, the most prestigious honor in the sport. Months later, he was then named Gatorade Track and Field Athlete of the Year, becoming the first male in history to sweep both honors. Yeah, I definitely take a lot of pride in um, knowing that I've inspired a lot of people. I think that's one main reason why I keep trying so hard. I think um, that makes a big difference um, for a lot of people when I can inspire them or answer their DM or talk to them in person and meet them at meet. So I think that's a big, that makes a big difference. We saw a veteran coach continue his program's excellence and break the record for most consecutive California State boys titles with six crowns. I, I see myself being at Great Oak for a while. You know, I've got three children that want to go to Great Oak High School. You know, they've, I've, <laughs> they've been raised to enjoy the success of Great Oak High School. We saw an incredible young coach rise to the top, achieving success in fairy tale fashion. His team broke every course record they competed at. Sean was then named National Cross Country Coach of the Year for the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. Yeah, I've had a few people here and there call and, and inquire things, but nothing. Um, there's no way in the world I'd go to another high school. Um, you couldn't give me enough money to go to another high school. I, I'm not leaving New Ray Park anytime soon. These two coaches plan to continue to make history with their teams. Our goal is to run the table for this, this decade. We got 14 out of 20 last decade. Our goal is each year we're gonna come in trying to sweep both sides and see if we can do it for the entire decade. Same thing, I mean, I think, like I said, people say, hey, just like what I would say about Great Oak before I started coaching, I wanna come in, I wanna win state title after state title. And we wanna keep winning NXN. From here, the story only continues for these two Golden State legends.